moments with Moses. And I will scatter you among the nations, and I will unsheathe the sword after you. And your land shall be a desolation, and your cities shall be a waste. Welcome back to the program, friend. It is I, your servant, Randall, broadcasting from the Federal Building in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Our next stop is Clarksville, Tennessee, then Nashville, Tennessee, then three cities in Alabama, and I'll stop there. Yesterday, we were in Lexington, and I thought, you know, let's write a new song for Mitch. Now, I have to admit, it's not my best work, and we're, we're fine-tuning it to turn it into a, a doo-wop, but go ahead and watch this. Hope it gives you a good laugh, and when we come back, I've got to show you something really cool. Ladies and gentlemen, the Mitch McConnell Choir. You ready, people? Ready. Ready. Mitch McConnell, boneless chicken, Kagan thinks he's finger Oh, Mitch, Mitch McConnell, he raises boneless chickens on his boneless chicken ranch. And Kagan thinks, oh, he's finger licking. Oh, my brother Mitch, if you need a backbone, I'll give you mine. Yes, I'll give you mine. Oh, brother Mitch, if you need a backbone, I'll give you mine. I'll give you mine. Oh, Mitch, Mitch, where are you? We need you to filibuster keg and come on, grow a backbone. Well, I hope you enjoyed that song. I know it's a little crazy. Anyway, I've, I've been trying to teach people to, to affect the course of the political debate, of political change, of how laws are changed, based upon how it's happened throughout our 200 plus year history. And conflict, controversy, good press, bad press, it's all a part of the equation. It just requires that we have the guts to go out there and do something. And I have to tell you something uh, before I show you this newspaper. I have been so very disappointed. It, it pains me to see the groups in Washington, D.C. that litter the horizon and all over the country that don't have the courage and the integrity and the sense of duty and obligation to defend the babies publicly with press conferences, with public demonstrations, with public calls to the senators to be faithful to their campaign promises. And this is a plague, folks. It's not just in pro-life, it's in stuff with the homosexual marriage movement, Second Amendment, and so forth. Anyway, I have in my hand, newspaper. This was the front page of one of the sections in the Louisville newspaper. Andrew, go ahead and get a shot, then we'll, uh, we'll lay it in over, the, over while I talk. The words, McConnell GOP, Kentucky-led chickens. McConnell, filibuster Kagan. McConnell challenged on Kagan, abortion foe call Senator a chicken. The right thing to do in this situation is to hold Mitch McConnell accountable, said Terry. And then it goes on to give me great quotes. It's time to stop the rhetoric, Terry said. Ms. Kagan's nomination is still in the Judiciary Committee and there are still outstanding questions for her, is what McConnell's office said. So they're having to respond to me Listen to my final quote. Find your problem with Elena Kagan and make that your hill to die on, he said. This is good press coverage. It's honest press coverage. You have to give them something to print. You have to give them something to put on television. And Mitch McConnell, I promise you, does not read his emails that pour in, but they read the Louisville paper and the Cincinnati Inquirer, the Kentucky version, which we got in yesterday. So I'm urging you, please, 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 hold a protest, hold a press conference in your area and let your voice be heard. Let your senators hear from you. I'm gonna take a break. When we come back, I wanna tell you a story about Mother Mary Jones, who was almost killed in her fight against child labor and safer working conditions for coal miners. It plays right into what we're doing here and now. Don't go away. Look, when you get as famous as me, you gotta do your own car work too, okay? Don't be alarmed of a professional on a closed track. If 
following program contains an all-you-can-eat philosophical buffet. If you suffer from mental indigestion, Randall may not be right for you. Check with your gastronomist. Speaking the truth when others hold their tongues. Wrestling for justice with left-wingers and crocodiles. Resisting the temptation to keep the peace at any price. The only talk show host who writes his own theme music, Randall Terry. Yeah, I'm intolerant. Do you know why? Pick it up. Because intolerance is a beautiful thing. Yeah, baby. Join us. Come on, let's go spread some intolerance together. We're on the road, baby. Boys, Daddy has to do the show. No, 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 put down that broken glass. Don't play with that knife. Oh, good grief. Oh. 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 My wife said that's not funny. It's a joke. <laughs> I'm so tired, I'm punch drunk. We gotta do the show today. Did I tell you that I was tired? But you know, the common man has gotta take this fight on the road because you know, the sophisticated pro-lifers in D.C., like National Right to Life and stuff, they're too busy sitting on their hands, warming themselves. I like them, don't get me wrong, but, uh, all right, I'm lying. Anyway, we had a lot of miles yesterday. We're gonna show you some footage of the interview we did up in uh, the Cincinnati area. We're in two newspapers today, taking the show on the road to Clarksville, Tennessee next, where we'll shoot the show from. I'll put a suit on and act like I'm a big shot. but. We're starting to get the momentum we're after, putting the public pressure on the Republicans over Kagan. In case you haven't been following the show, we're on an 11-city tour to hold Republicans accountable, to, to, to beg them, to pressure them, to cajole them, to filibuster Kagan. Because if there was ever a woman who should not be on the court, it's her. I'm not going to whine anymore today on the air, but I want you to know that down deep in my heart, I am whining, okay? I'm a whiner. You shut up. Don't even look at me. Yeah, it's the dog. Anyway, you good girl. Come here. Oh, I didn't mean that. No, I'm not a mean man. You're a good little girl. Oh, yes. This is a Sheltie Collie. I've got to go. Reggie, bail me out, please. Bail me out. Reggie, bail me out. Reggie. Get your act together. The whole staff is coming unglued. Reggie, just turn the thing on. I got something to say. Mitch McConnell, have you lost your mind? You say, well, we're not sure if we're going to filibuster keg and we have to do more research. Man, how much data do you need? The woman wants to kill babies. She supports the homosexual agenda. She wants to take away our Second Amendment right. And you're not sure if you should filibuster her? Hello, wake up and smell the sulfur. Do you understand what I'm saying? It is hot out here, hot as hell is what they say. But I'm telling you something, it will be a lot hotter in the real hell where people go who do not do the right thing. Mitch, do the right thing. Hello friend, we're here in Bowling Green, Kentucky in front of the federal building where we just had a press conference with the local television station and the local newspaper. We're gonna play a clip of that for you in a minute. Some of you have been watching the program, you know that we're right now in the middle of an 11 city tour where we're calling on Mitch McConnell and other Republicans to filibuster Kagan. Uh, you'll see in the interviews that I, that I do, yesterday I think we're gonna play a clip for you at some point from my interview in Cincinnati. We'll play a clip from the interview I just did here in, um, in Bowling Green. You're gonna see that it's very intense. Part of what I've been doing with this show and what I will do this week is to teach you that you can do this. I didn't read a book on how to do this. I just started figuring it out. And then I said, well, heck, if I can do this, other people can do it. So for literally over 20 years, I have been training people on how to do protests, demonstrations, and how to get press because that's, that's how your voice gets heard in your community. You could go into a, a local club, a local restaurant, and talk to three people or 10 people. But if you stand on a street corner with a bullhorn and you have a bunch of people with signs and all the passerbys are seeing you, well, you might reach several hundred, even several thousand. But 
If you get in the newspaper and you get on television with your message, then you can be heard by tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, sometimes by millions. So our voice being heard with the truth is central in the fight to end child killing, in the fight to end the federal plantation, the government takeover of so many of our rights. It's critical as we defend our Second Amendment rights. We've got to be heard. And if you do something that's newsworthy, you're usually gonna get covered. And in contrary to what a lot of people say, where the press is so biased, I find that we get pretty fair coverage. So you take a look at these interviews. I hope that they inspire you. And uh, in the next segment, we've got a brand new song. Don't go away. But we're not sure if we can filibuster her and win. Oh, all right, but, and we don't want to look bad. But however, the, Re the Republican Party is the party of life. The, I'm sorry? Ah, <laughs> vote Republican. <laughs> because we are the ones that are going to sing your song. <laughs> Even as we run away from the battles that we profess we love. I appreciate your honesty, Mitch. I'm going to kill you and eat, eat you. Slow roasted. <laughs> okay. And it's a random military? Yes, sir. Okay. So, sir, just tell me, why are you out here today? We're here to beg Mitch McConnell. Do your duty. Filibuster Kagan. She supports the killing of children. She supports militant homosexual agenda. She is not a friend of our Second Amendment right to keep and bear arms. How much more data do you need? Filibuster her. We live in Washington. We call it Washington, D.C., the District of Criminals. It's the ultimate in organized crime. <laughs> gotcha. So if you could just tell Mr. McConnell anything, if he was standing right here in front of you, what would you tell him? I would say, Mitch, you came into office on promises, campaign promises, that you would be pro-life, that you would be pro-Second Amendment. This is the biggest fight we're having right now for the babies, is to get the court to a 5-4 majority to overturn Roe. So honor your campaign promises, Mitch. And if you need a backbone, I'll loan you mine. We're, we're going to Mitch McConnell's offices, then Lamar Alexander, then Jeff Sessions, then Lindsey Graham, to say, hey guys, you've all campaigned on a pro-life platform. Now it's time for you to pony up. Do what you said you would do. Don't say that you want to overturn Roe and, pro and protect the babies by law and let somebody like Kagan get on the court. That's absurd, it's hypocrisy. The, the, from my vantage point in Washington, D.C., we need to clean house. There's probably 5% of the U.S. senators that are worth a darn about the same amount in the U.S. House. I guarantee you that the average business owner here in Bowling Green would do a better job than a lot of the senators and congressmen that are in office, including Mitch McConnell. A lot of these guys have been just bought off by special interests. It's a teaching moment. Go on television. Mitch, go on television and say, we're calling for a filibuster for the honor of human life. Mm -hmm. And even if we lose, the baby's lives are worth it. Even though nothing changes? Yeah, because it's a teaching moment. In other words, part of social revolution, part of social change is that you pick fights, even ones that you might lose, so that the, the pathos and the truth connected to the issue gets out in the public. All right, I've been doing it for a long time, and so maybe I make it look easy, but you can do it too. I've got to take a quick break. When we come back, a new song that I wrote for Mitch McConnell and sang in front of his office in Lexington. If my cloud has a silver lining, it's only to store electricity for the lightning. A nation without a conscience is a nation without a soul. A nation without a soul is a nation that cannot live. Sir Winston Churchill. Welcome back to the program, friend. There was a lady named Mary Jones. They called her Mother Mary Jones. She was a, an activist who had a horrifying tragedy hit her. When she was 37, her husband and her four children all died of the yellow fever. 
She ended up devoting her life to the plight of workers and to safer working conditions and to ending child labor. An incredible story. One night, she went to a town and she walked alongside of a coal worker who was going to help with a strike. And she was known throughout the country. One senator said she's the grandmother of all agitators and she's the great grandmother of all agitators. And she said, I hope to live to be the great great grandmother of all agitators. Just funny stuff and intense. Arrested numbers of times, put in horrible jails. So on this night, she's walking along with this coal miner and she knows that they're up to something, the, 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 the owners of the coal mine. And she says to him, I think his name was Johnny, Johnny, do you have a gun? And he said, yes, ma'am, I do. And she said, is it concealed? And he said, yes, ma'am. And she said, do you have a permit for that? He said, no. He said, well, then she said, you better take it out. So he pulls out his gun and all of these thugs jump out of the bushes and the trees and grab them and take them down to the jail. They arrest them and they say, we're going to keep you overnight. And she says, no, I'll pay his fine for him. Well, that shocked everyone, but they agreed to let him do it. They paid it and they left. The next day, somebody on the inside came and said, it's a good thing you two paid that fine and got out that night because their whole plan was to arrest you, put you in jail, and then tell everyone that they let you go in the middle of the night, but they were gonna take you down to the ovens and burn you. They're gonna kill you and burn both of your bodies. She escaped death by this much. So there's a cost. That's what I'm trying to tell you for the freedoms that we enjoy, for the safety that we have, the fact that our children are not working in coal mines, there's a cost. We've got to pay that cost. We're squandering what other people got for us through our inaction, through our silence. So I'm going to show you one more clip from my interview that I did yesterday in Cincinnati, which I think that uh, will be instructive for you. We got great coverage in the Cincinnati Enquirer, great coverage in the Louisville paper. We just did the interviews here for the Bowling Green paper and for the Bowling Green TV station. It's just getting the word out. Please call Mitch McConnell, 202-224-3121, 202-224-3121, and say filibuster. Watch this clip and then uh, I'll be right back. That she, that she supports all killing of children for any reason at any time in the pregnancy. I mean, this is an ideologue. This is a woman who is committed to killing children at all costs. Mitch McConnell has a moral obligation to God and to these babies to lead a filibuster. He swore an oath on the Bible when he took his office. He says he's a Christian. He says he's pro-life. Mm -hmm. Then he needs to honor God with his service in this moment of time. A hundred years from now, they will look back at us and they will judge us based upon this one life and death struggle. And right now, Mitch McConnell is going to get a failing grade in the eyes of history. So part of my mission on this trip is to stir up trouble for so-called pro-life Republicans and to shame so-called pro-lifers who have become collaborators with the enemy. They just cut a deal with the devil. And so when France was finally liberated after the war was over, there were members of the Vichy government that were executed for their collaboration with the Nazis. We have pro-lifers that are collaborators with the baby killers and they are poisoning this entire movement. And they're giving guys like McConnell and Graham and Sessions a free pass. So as you can see from that interview, the issue is speaking clearly. Go ahead, sound like a radical. The people who started this country did. The people that made it so that women can vote did. People who ended civil rights, oppression, they sounded like radicals too. Just say the truth, give them the truth, and they will print it, as we've seen. All right, I'm gonna take a quick break. When we come back, some words from one of our founding fathers. Don't go away. O oh Lord, thou God of vengeance, thou God of vengeance, shine forth. Rise up, O judge of the earth, Render to the proud their deserts. O Lord, how long shall the wicked, how long shall the wicked exult? Thomas Jefferson said, an enemy generally believes and says what he wishes. Well, 
Maybe he should have said an honest enemy. The truth of the matter is that with many Democrats, they say exactly what they mean. They are bold for lies and for evil. While we, on the other hand, tend to be a little bit weak and frightened. Listen, if the enemies of truth and justice are gonna be so bold, don't you think we should be just as bold for the truth? God bless you, pray for us. See you tomorrow.